Russian cruise missile strikes on uh, infrastructure targets across Ukraine tonight, leaving parts of Lviv without power. Observers say the attack is likely the biggest barrage since the beginning of the war. The latest uh, on uh, this and uh, other events in the Ukraine. We're joined by SABC correspondent Sergio Ormos. Uh, he is in the city of Lviv in Ukraine. So, Sergio, a very uh, good evening to you. Our time. Tell us uh, a little bit more about what's been going on in the past 24 hours. That's right. So I'm, I'm doing this from a hotel room because it's now curfew here in Lviv, uh, Lviv so you can't be outside. What we saw before curfew started was explosions. Uh, you could hear them in the city center and you could see the smoke rising. Um, we know from the mayor that uh, power, uh, power substations were hit, at least three, three, that it caused power outages in parts of the city. So you could uh, see the street lights. Some of them were out and some were working. You could see lights flickering in different uh, restaurants. Um, and we heard from the head of the railway uh, administration that uh, at least six railway facilities in western Ukraine and central Ukraine were also hit. Um, so there's at least 14 trains that are delayed. And for context, Lviv is in the western part of Ukraine that's thought to be peaceful, right? It's the last stop uh, for refugees fleeing war-torn cities. Um, and so uh, today there was air raid sirens all day, but you could see kids outside playing and people walking, going to shops. This strike today, tonight, uh, I think is a reminder that you know the war is in every city in, in Ukraine. No place is uh, uh, out of the reach of the Russian armed forces as they strike residential areas in, in nearly every city uh, in this country. Mm. I mean, um, we've seen when a, a celebrity visits a region, especially a goodwill ambassador, Angelina Jolie, I'm talking about here, I, the media space was awash with that. The fact that it happened at a time when she had arrived on a surprise visit. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that and how significant that was. Yeah, you know, Angelina Jolie's visit here, while may not seem uh, like something that's going to, you know, it, it is not uh, uh, like the $33 billion proposed by the United States, right? It's not uh, arms shipments. However, if you talk to Ukrainians here, uh, I, there was just a lot of excitement, frankly. There was a lot of, I, you know, you, a, a, that day that the news was announced, I was talking to just everybody I talked to was reminding me, like, hey, did you know Angelina Jolie's here in, in Ukraine? Mm. They're showing me pictures. And there was just a lot of, uh, like, uh, excitement and, 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 I don't know, pride, that, uh, sense, uh, frankly, that she, she came to visit. So that kind of stuff, uh, I, I think, means a lot just to the average, everyday Ukrainian here. Um, even though it might not, you know, change the outcome of the war immediately or anything like that, I, I think for the morale of this country, it, it, it really does uh, show. Mm. Uh, and as you mentioned that there was shelling in different places, reports are that uh, railway uh, substations uh, near Lviv were attacked and uh, there have been reports of more success in taking territory around Kharkiv. What else can you tell us around that? That's right. So, you know, we know tonight of at least uh, six railway stations in western central Ukraine hit uh, explosions. This news just coming in the last couple hours. Uh, however, uh, the, the east of the country has really seen the majority of, of, of strikes. I mean, uh, Kyiv and western Ukraine, you know, the Russian armed forces have left this area. And yes, there are long range missiles that do strike here. Uh, last month, uh, you'll remember that seven were killed just here in, in, in Lviv. But uh, in Luhansk, for example, a region that's talked about uh, much less. It, last week, the entire region was out of electricity uh, because of, of heavy shelling. There, there was reports of children and civilians hiding in a school to try to escape the heavy bombardment and the school being targeted. Uh, in Kharkiv, uh, Ukraine's you know, second city, so-called, continued shelling as the Russian armed forces have been trying to make an advance. They've been bought, getting bogged down as Ukrainian armed forces have, you know, uh, uh, counterattacked and, and shifted their tactics. And uh, President Zelensky said they're making, you know, tactical success there, even as Russian armed forces uh, uh, sh uh, shell that city. In Odessa, we saw an airstrike on a runway. Uh, this follows last week's uh, cruise missile strike that killed uh, eight people, including a three-month-old baby. Um, and so the east of the country is seeing heavy bombardment. There's a 300 mile uh, wide front where the Russian armed forces are attacking with artillery, airstrikes, and cruise missiles. Mm -hmm. 
Sergio, I want you to just share with us. I mean, for some of us, we can only imagine it, and we should be grateful to say we have not experienced war. So we hear of attacks, I think, in um, uh, the Venezia region. There's also been in Donetsk. So we're just trying to imagine exactly what is going on, especially when you talk about these civilian casualties. I, I think it is to our mind, according to reports, that as many people who could are trying to flee the Ukraine, irrespective of where you know they can seek shelter, just to get out of harm's way. And you're not in all of these regions, obviously, but are we just t talking about a country that is uh, being bombarded at all ends, even though, as you say, it's more concentrated towards the east at the moment? So um, you're pretty much just waiting for your day and your family's day to come or, you know, be unexpectedly hit by some sort of a missile. That's right. So uh, it, to get a picture of what it what it's like, uh, you know, the right now the latest figures are about five million of people have left Ukraine, uh, you know, as refugees. But the majority of Ukrainians are here. They've stayed. Uh, and uh, what you're hearing in places like Kharkiv is the malls have opened back up. The restaurants have opened back up. It, despite the continued shelling, um, there is a sense of, of people uh, that, you know, life must continue. And they, there's just an incredible resiliency. And it's, it's hard to articulate unless you see it. But I was in Cherniv, and, and in Cherniv, uh, the, the, the city there, 70% of it was destroyed, according to the mayor. And the, the, you couldn't even buy food in a store. The stores were all closed. They were surviving, uh, you know, rationing water, surviving on, on, on humanitarian aid that would come in, not from, you know, big NGO organizations, but just everyday Ukrainians who would borrow vans from small businesses and people who would lend them their vehicles to drive into Cherniv to deliver food for, for, for the besieged residents there a few weeks back. Uh, uh, and, and this is just an incredible effort by just everyday civilians who might have, you know, been uh, coffee shop owners or might have been, you know, uh, tech workers who are now doing incredible risky jobs to bring food or medicine to, to citizens in besieged areas. So it, it, what you're seeing here is that despite the heavy bombardment in places like Kharkiv or despite the post-conflict areas like in places like Cherniv, you know, the, there is a sense of, of that life must continue and that there isn't a... a, a a sense of giving up. Uh, it should be very clear that the, 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 the feeling here is that they are being invaded and they're all in this together. I mean, there is no kind of internal uh, uh, disagreement about what's going on. Everybody here is very like clear that like they have to help each other. I, and so uh, if you're on the street and you're walking around uh, and, and you know, there's air raid sirens and you'll see people are kind of, you know, help each other. It, it, is, it, is, a, it is an incredible sight of, of, of humanity, really, how these Ukrainians are dealing with such a you know, difficult situation. They're responding with just incredible uh, resiliency. All right, thank you so much for that latest update. Sergio Omez is the SAC correspondent. Uh, he speaks to us from Lviv in the Ukraine.